Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on enzymes, which are biological catalysts. So let's get right into it with our first key concept here. Enzymes are catalysts for chemical reactions in living things. So to understand what enzymes do, first we have to understand what chemical reactions are all about. So chemical reactions change substances from one thing to something different. So the definition of a chemical reaction is when there is a new substance created. So just to get you familiar with some of the terminology here, uh, outlined in green down there is what you start with in a chemical reaction. Those are known as the reactants. In this case, it's ammonia and hydrochloric acid. And after they react with each other, they produce products. So reactants are the before, products are the after in a chemical reaction. Now, chemical reactions, uh, some of them require energy. So the energy needed to start that reaction is called the activation energy. That energy is needed to activate the chemical reaction uh, to ensure that it happens. Okay, so this is all leading up to catalysts. Now, catalysts take advantage of the fact that reactions need activation energy to happen by decreasing that activation energy. So catalysts will speed up the reaction by lowering the amount of energy required for that reaction to happen. So therefore, that reaction rate is increased. So if you look down at the uh, diagram down here, you can see the energy of the reactants, which is down pretty low, uh, the energy of the products, and then you see like a little roller coaster, okay? So you need to add energy to get to where the reaction will happen and produce the products. All the, activation, all the ca uh, catalyst does is lower the amount of activation energy required for that reaction to happen. So enzymes are catalysts in living things. So we often call them biological catalysts. They do the exact same thing, but inside living organisms and the reactions that take place in them. So let's talk about the enzyme structure a little bit. So its structure is what's going to allow certain reactants to bind and others not. So the reactants uh, in this case are called substrates. So substrates will bind to enzymes on the active site. That is where the binding takes place. Now, if you can see here the purple piece on the bottom left, that's the enzyme. The substrate or the reactants it, are the other two pieces on top there. If you notice, there is sort of a lock and key model here to where there's uh, certain pieces on the substrates that will fit in certain pieces of the enzyme. Uh, if those pieces do not fit, then we've got the wrong enzyme substrate match going on here. So, and the only place that these substrates can bind is on the active site where uh, all that binding can take place. So how do enzymes work? Well, if you look at this diagram here, you got uh, substrates binding to the active site, and then when the substrate or the reactants uh, bind to that enzyme, they come out as something different. So you had two different reactants, red and green circle, binding to the enzyme, and once they unbind, they are a purple uh, larger molecule, which indicates that they are something different. So they enter as reactants, reaction happens, and they leave as products. What I want to draw your attention to here, though, is that the enzyme itself, the orange part, does not change at all. Same as catalysts, right? Enzymes speed up a reaction, but themselves are not changed in any way. So another picture here is that in addition to uh, enzymes promoting the making of a bond to make a new product, they can also break the bond between substrates to create a product. So let's say the substrate or the reactants is some molecule that is bonded together. Well, it can bind to the, uh, to the enzyme, undergo the chemical reaction, and come out as something different. It doesn't always have to be two things making one thing or one substrate making two products. It can be any of those as long as a new product is formed. And again, here, look, the enzyme doesn't change at all. It helps the reaction go faster, okay? And that itself is not used up. So, looking at a graph here, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, enzymes can do. Uh, they, they speed up the reaction, but the, the conditions in which they can do that uh, is very small. So, uh, changes in temperature and pH uh, can change the shape of an enzyme and cause it to break down. When an enzyme breaks down, it's called denaturing because enzymes are proteins. So if we look here, if you see the rate of the reaction on the y-axis and the temperature on the x-axis, there is an optimum temperature 
for most enzymes, and that is human body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. If the temperature gets much higher than that, the enzyme's not going to want to function. If it gets much lower than that, it's not going to want to function. So there is an optimal temperature and an optimal pH uh, that will cause the enzymes to act their best. And if any, any sort of uh, conditions outside of that will cause it to denature or to, uh, lose its shape and not work anymore. So what does that look like if the shape changes? So you have the native state on the bottom left, which has an active site right there on the right side, and it's just a very normal looking uh, enzyme. But then if it denatures and it starts changing shape, sometimes the active site will no longer be available and thus that enzyme can't do anything. So there's a good look at native state and denatured state of an enzyme.